Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crempton News First at Four. I'm Whitney Ward. We begin with breaking news at this hour. Take a look. We've got a live look right now. Almost all of Spokane Valley's fire trucks are responding to a garage fire. This is at 14th and University. This fire broke out this afternoon. It spread quickly to a nearby field. People in homes north and south of that fire have now been evacuated. University is completely closed right now near the scene. The fire broke out in an RV and then spread to the home's garage and then, as we said, then into that field. No one is hurt, though. This is a developing story. We are tracking it. We do have a crew on the scene right now, so we'll continue to bring you the latest information as we have it. But these go hand in hand, so if you stepped even one foot outside today, you know the intense heat is here across the region and things are only expected to continue heating up. So we want to go straight outside now to our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Lagu, for a look at just how hot it is now and how hot it's going to get. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Whitney. It is hot. You know, yesterday we talked about it being the hottest day we had experienced so far this year, and that was 95 degrees here in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene looking very inviting right now. And the reason is this. How about some of these temperatures? 96 makes this the hottest day we have seen so far this year in Spokane. We've done it yet again, and I'm going to be able to say that the next couple of days. 94 in Coeur d'Alene right now makes it the warmest day you've experienced there. Temperatures up in the triple digits out in central Washington. And if you hear a buzzing noise right now, that's actually our AC for the entire building just cranking, trying to keep up. Excessive heat warnings remain in effect through Saturday at 11 p.m. We are talking some serious heat across the region. Yesterday, we talked about how these would expire Friday night at 11. We've now bumped it back because the forecast calls for that heat to stick around basically through the weekend. I would not be shocked if we saw heat advisories last through Sunday for how hot it's going to get. Overnight, we drop down into the upper 60s. we will be a little bit warmer than we were this morning, and that warming trend continues tomorrow. The first triple digit day of the year for much of the inland northwest, and that includes us here in Spokane. Coming up, we're going to talk everything that that means for you. All right. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And Spokane nonprofits want to help people beat the heat as those temperatures reach toward the tip triple digits later this week. Several nonprofits right now are setting up pop up tents and cooling shelters with free water, food, and even sunscreen. Those are set up across the city. And according to Spokane officials, the city is opening cooling centers when temperatures reach over 95 degrees for two consecutive days. Volunteers, though, say people really need the relief right now. Compassionate Addiction Treatment is offering free water and food out of its downtown center. That recovery resource is also planning to set up four pop-up tents across town. One has been set up just since Monday at the corner of Division and MLK Way. Now volunteers are passing out water and food and giving people just a place in the shade so they can get out of the sun. One person says she volunteered there because she knows there are vulnerable people in our community who need basic assistance. It's just a, a sigh of relief, you know, when they can get water or sit for a minute in some shade. And you know that, you know, these people need it and the city's not doing anything to make sure that they're okay during this heat wave. And so being the one to help to do that is it's just, it's amazing. So over near I-90, Jules Helping Hands is also setting up two large cooling tents. Organizer Julie Garcia says her plan is to have the tents up and running by tomorrow morning. Those tents will be able to hold about 200 people each. They'll have cots, fans, water, and even a portable shower station. She says when the city doesn't step up, the community still has to work overtime to find solutions to keep people safe. And the heat isn't just impacting humans, it's also impacting our pets. Veterinarians say the heat can be much worse for dogs and cats because they can't tell you when they're feeling overheated. So you need to be vigilant as a pet owner. And if your pet is showing signs of heat exha exhaustion, you need to know what to watch out for. If your pet does have heat stroke, I mean, they're lying flat on the ground and they're just panting excessively, maybe they're not even, they might look a little glazed over, just they're not 100% cognizant of you. Um, you can, you definitely want to get cold water on them. If you have a dog, make sure and start planning your walks around the sun. That means early morning or late in the evening. That's when things are cooler and safer for them to be outside. And if they do have to go out in the middle of the day, make sure it's in a place where they can get access to shade. 
and try to cool off. If you have an indoor outdoor cat, try to keep them inside during the hottest parts of the day. Make sure your blinds are closed. If your cat does like to lay in the sunspots, they can get overheated even indoors, even if they don't realize it. And of course, make sure that they have plenty of water available to them all day long because they can get dehydrated just like we do. And another thing to be aware of is remember how hot your car can get and how quickly temperatures heat up very, very quickly inside your vehicle. This is a graphic from the National Weather Service. So for example, if it's 80 degrees outside in 10 minutes, it could feel like 99 degrees inside that car. And then after an hour, it could top 123 degrees. And of course, if it's 100, those temperatures just keep going up. Well, in other news this morning, Planned Parenthood Greater Northwest has now filed a third lawsuit against the state of Idaho following two other filings in March and June of this year. This petition challenges Idaho's ban on abortion after fetal or embryonic cardiac activity can be detected. The ban amounts to a criminal prohibition on abortion in the state of Idaho at about six weeks of pregnancy. Unless the court intervenes, that six-week ban will become effective on or around August 19th. Meanwhile, City Council in Spokane passed a resolution last night supporting a woman's access to abortion services. The resolution prohibits city resources from ever being used to assist in the investigation of a woman coming to Spokane to get an abortion. It passed four to two. Now, to be very clear, yesterday's vote was a resolution. That means it is non-binding. It's more of an expression of the City Council's position on this particular issue. It is not an ordinance. That would be legislation that could change current laws or policies. Outside of City Hall last night, a group of demonstrators supporting abortion access gathered in support of the resolution. Meantime, inside council chambers, the majority of people who spoke during that public comment period were opposed to the resolution. Governors from all over the western half of the U.S. are in Coeur d'Alene today for the Western Governors Association annual meeting. It's a three-day event. It started today at the Coeur d'Alene Resort. Abortion rights activists demonstrated outside the resort today. Inside, the agenda was centered on fighting wildfires. What we do pretty good at in this country is sharing resources. When the fire season in New Mexico and Arizona is going, there's not a lot going on here in Idaho. And then it rolls through. So the governors will also be talking about drought in western states, supply chains, and trying to repave the west's highways and bridges. And also U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is a featured speaker at this week's conference, along with the Secretary of Agriculture and the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. The public can register to attend some of those keynote addresses as well. Happening tonight, the Spokane Valley City Council will be voting on stricter laws on camping in city limits. Those amendments are to the city nuisance laws. If the changes ultimately are approved, camping on private property or living in RVs for more than 30 days will be banned as well as leaving a large collection of cars out in the open. That will become illegal too. The vote comes as the city of Spokane and Spokane Valley are grappling with how best to deal with the area's growing homeless crisis.